Welcome to this new series, everyone. I will be conserving this Belgian dye personal computer, a machine that came out in 1980. It was designed uh, in the late 70s, and it was a wonderful machine. As far as computer engineering is concerned, this was really a top machine. It's an 8-bit uh, personal computer, but it was even used to produce professional graphics for TV stations in the very, very early 80s. Imagine that, a personal computer uh, used for generating graphics for TV stations. Um, it's a very, very rare machine today, historically very significant, because there is a, a story that is yet to be told about what could have been. In, this machine was selected by the Dutch um, to be basically the BBC Micro of the Low Countries, the BBC Micro of, of the Benelux. And that didn't pan out because Dai couldn't make enough of these machines fast enough for a low enough price. I will be telling that story of what could have been in another series. In this series, I want to focus on restoring or conserving this wonderful and historically significant, significant machine, which of course is also going to go to a museum, <laughs> as most of my uh, restorations do. Um, here are some historical pictures of this machine. You see that um, people used to put stickers uh, on the case. Um, the main board uh, is in my machine. It's looking a lot worse than this photo. <laughs> this was a perfect main board. My, mine needs a lot of care. And the case also needs a lot of care because there were stickers uh, pasted on this case. So it yellowed up in a completely non-uniform way. There are lots of scuff marks. This needs retrobriting. I'm not fond of retrobriting, but there are situations in which we cannot avoid. And this is one of them. So I took this machine out to the sun uh, in the European summer for three days and I used um, a peroxide cream, 12%, that I spread all over the case and I came back to renew it um, every half an hour or so to prevent it from drying. I didn't use uh, plastic foil or any of that stuff to prevent it from evaporating. The case was too big, so I just came back every half an hour to, to refresh uh, the peroxide uh, cream. Uh, this is after the first day. It's much improved, but there is still a long way to go. The peroxide also removed the paint of the metal keyboard bezel. That's not a problem, on the contrary, I would need to do that anyway because it's horribly uh, rusted, uh, that bezel. There is another, another metal part at the back that is also rusted, not as bad as the keyboard bezel, but also needs treatment. Um, but the bezel was priority because it was so rusted, so I had to pull it out very uh, delicately with that plastic spatula. And it's also corroded on the back, you see? Water or liquid got in there in between the case and the metal bezel and corroded everything. So um, no paint will survive this. I have to sand all that corrosion down with a power tool, which of course is what I did. This is the front part. You can see some areas of deeper pitting that I would have to like there on the lower uh, right corner. I would deal with that using a rust converter. This is a version that we have here in the Netherlands. It's actually a German uh, thing, but we have it here. So I'm going to spread it all over this aluminum bezel, both front and back, and that chemical will convert whatever residual rust is in those areas of deeper pitting into an, an inert compound, and it will also uh, create a protective layer um, on the metal. So here we go, you, you just paint it on uh, with a, a little brush that comes with it, and the chemical reaction will start and you will see that uh, the areas of uh, rusting will turn very dark. Uh, areas with little rusting will, will just become purple. Uh, but even the purple um, is, is an inert compound that will ha help protect the metal from future corrosion. This was a very sensitive part. It's, it's the bezel of the keyboard. So if the user spills anything, coffee, soft drinks, that's where it lands. Now this is with the rust converter already dried, I already very lightly wet sanded it uh, to remove uh, imperfections. So this is now ready to be primed. 
um, but I also have to deal with the other metal part at the back of the, of the computer. It was not as bad, uh, but it does require uh, attention. I'm using my Dremel with a very hard rubber tip. This is rubber, it's not going to eat into the metal, but it's very hard rubber. So it will remove the dried glue that was there before. Of course, I would use fresh new glue to glue this back to the case. Um, but in addition to removing the glue and the old paint, it removes areas uh, of rust um, as well. And I didn't want to take a bigger power tool to the back, uh, um, to, to, to this specific metal piece, because it's not as drastically corroded as the keyboard bezel. It is corroded, it needs attention, but it's not as bad, so I don't need to send everything out. Um, I will be rubbing off the rust uh, in a localized way. Now, of course, the areas uh, which have been exposed um, because I rubbed off the rust uh, have to be protected with uh, the rust converter again. I'm not um, yeah, painting it everywhere, I'm doing it locally now because I also want to preserve that texture, that old texture uh, of the paint which I cannot reproduce. Um, so I want to preserve it even though it will not be uniform. Uh, that, that, that texture is not going to survive everywhere because the areas I rubbed off will not have the texture uh, but at least wanted to maintain some of the original stuff um, that was not damaged. Some people might say, well, we should have just sanded everything and recoated re it, it would be uniform. And indeed, it probably would look better, but uh, this is a conservation. And the, the, the idea here is to conserve as much as possible. I couldn't conserve the texture in the keyboard bezel, it was too far gone. But here I can cons conserve it in most places, uh, most visible places. So I would do, the, I would do that. And these, these are the large areas where there was old glue. And to rub off the old glue, I ended up having to rub off the paint which was not a bad thing because those were the areas where most of the corrosion was present um, as well. So it, it was good to have cleaned them all up. And after this, I'm just going to spray and uh, respray uh, both metal pieces um, with uh, two layers of um, black primer, two layers of uh, black paint, non-glossy, and finally two layers um, of varnish also non-glossy because uh, originally uh, there was no gloss uh, in here so I don't want to add um, a feature that wasn't there before. It will be obvious enough that this machine is restored because of the break in the uniformity of the texture. So here you see me already spraying the, the, the first coats after the treatment with rust converter. I, spray, I sprayed two relatively thin uh, layers uh, of paint and then well, of primer, two of paint and two of uh, the, the varnish as well. Now the case is back in the sun and you can see that I, you know, it's plastered with a, a peroxide a cream. Um, it took three days, about six or seven hours of summer sun um, every day to, to make it uh, uniform again. Uh, the difference was extreme in the beginning, so it required a lot of uh, retrobriting. Now, to remove the glue from the plastic parts of the case, I'm not going to use power tools. Uh, they would be too aggressive, remove too much material. What you see me doing, I'm applying WD-40, the normal lubricant, anti-rust lubricant. Um, it's also an excellent solvent. Um, and after I let it sit there for a little while, I use a small screwdriver because it gives me control and I gently sort of scrape off the, the, the old glue which is now softened by the WD-40. Now this screwdriver will also scratch and score the plastic, which I want because uh, I need that scoring in order for the new glue to grip the plastic well. Um, at this point, I'm already using a, a bigger metal, metal spatula for the areas that are less hard uh, to do. Now, once everything is clean, I use 303 aerospace protectant, which is a sort of a sunscreen for plastics. It, it rehydrates the plastics and um, 
puts a coat of UV protectant on it and that's important so it doesn't yellow up again. After all this work, the last thing I want is that it yellows up again. Now with that done, I move to Renaissance Microcrystalline Wax, uh, wax Polish. It's a wax developed by the British Museum for conservation purposes. Um, and what it would do, it would put a hard transparent layer on top of the case and on top of the UV protectant. It will lock in the UV protectant. It will protect the case also against spills and scuffs and all that grind and stuff. And it, uh, it makes the sheen of the case uniform. It equalizes the sheen, creates a very soft sheen that is bright but not glossy, very pleasant, and it equalizes everything so the case looks new again. And to prove it, <laughs> here's the final result. Um, it does look new. Um, the sheen is now equalized. It is protected. Um, I used that flannel to buff it up after the wax. You have to buff up after the wax, otherwise it doesn't have this nice soft sheen that, uh, that you see now. So the case is done. I will bring the other pieces together later in the final episode when everything will come together. For now, though, I will just leave you with this side-by-side -side comparison, how it was and how it is now. So stay tuned. In the next episode, we'll move to the electronics. See you next time. Take care.